I coming know. to the stage the man who has written, directed, and produced some of the top records of the last two decades. He's a multi Grammy Award winner, CEO of My Block Inc., instrumentalist, and pastor. Chart topping hits spans multiple genres, and he's one of the most sought after producers of our time. And ladies and gentlemen, coming to the stage, Warren Campbell. You know, I want to personally thank you for the Invincible. I'm sorry, Incredible. Oh, oh my. incredible. Oh, I'm talking about I have my Geo Metro, my first car. <laughs> was it yellow? It was red. And I had red <laughs> tape on the door because the driver's side door would not stay closed. <laughs> Got that album purchased with my own money. I was just talking to Kirk about this. I had Kirk, I had Bri uh, the uh, Rebirth of Kirk Franklin. Oh, yeah. And then I got Rebirth. Incredible, and I'm talking about putting it in. Bam! Bobbles you, bobbles you, bobbles you, bobbles you, drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. I was like, oh! Because I wanted to, I I wanted gospel to be cool enough that if somebody who wouldn't say was riding with me, I wouldn't have to be like, you know, sad. My mom said I gotta listen to that. Mary Mary was like, oh, you like you might not know them yet, but you you okay? We rocking with this. Yeah, this is dope. It sounded like it sounded like music of the day, which gospel very rarely sounds like music that being released that that time period. I can attribute that to one, Mary Mary. I know a lot of people don't don't know this is the first gospel thing I ever did professionally. Because, mm. like I said, I'm coming from Death Row, Drew Hill, R&B stuff. I didn't did Shinese at the time. I did this, this, and a bunch of stuff. And then we're doing this gospel thing. So I'm like, I don't necessarily know how to make a quote-unquote gospel sound. And I don't do that. Yeah. I'm going to do what I did over there, over here, <laughs> and just make some really cool lyrics, and, you know, yeah. that's it. And it just happened to be, and then their voices together, I don't I still to this day don't know what it is. It's some kind of weird chemistry that God put together. I literally, you know, God writes these songs, man. <laughs> I'm just like taking dictation for real. That's the same thing Kirk said. Yeah. He said, I'm just a pen. God is yeah. the author. It's I'm just literally a, a download. Pen. I'm like, oh, okay. Shoot. Oh, oh. Like, and after that, the aftermath of a shackles or a God and me or mm -hmm. walking or in whatever, with any one of them songs, here comes all the labels. We want a song like that. Mm. Give me a shackles. Give me a go get it. I'm like, I, I didn't give you the first one. I didn't write that. God wrote that, man. I I can give you something else, and it's gonna be just as big for your artist. But yeah, I'm more like you know you, my contemporaries like the Pharrells, Rodney Jerkins, Dr. Dre's, uh, Timbaland. You know it's them when you hear it. Yeah, me it's different. I'm more of a tailor. Mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna tailor make this for you. It's gonna be yours. And nobody else gonna have it. Mm -hmm. I don't have there is no other he is for Brandy I'm not right. gonna do it on nobody else that's her thing yeah mm -hmm. okay so I wanna we wanna talk about your pen game a little bit cause a lot of people don't know you worked on songs as a writer producer whatever so mm -hmm. what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna list a track mm -hmm. and I want you to talk about the inspiration behind it what you did on it just okay. give us a little insight okay the song is Shanice <laughs> When I Close My Eyes When I Close My Eyes um, was a track that I did for TLC. Really? Yeah, I did a bunch of tracks for TLC, gave him to Big John. He heard that one. That, this was like the last one on the tape that I mm -hmm. gave him. He was like, yeah, make me a copy of that, but put, put that last one first. I was like, when I done, when he did that, I already know he's <laughs> he don't care nothing about them other songs <laughs> at all, right? <laughs> so I did that, and then he calls me one day and says, yo, I'm tying this writer name tomorrow. I want you to come hear something. I go up to the office, and she's singing, Woo! close my eyes i was like oh she's singing it over the record mm. this is dope we do it and tlc loves it some kind of way this is the story la was high on the record they having dinner one day babyface somehow pr convinces chili because chili's supposed to sing the song that she wouldn't be able to sing a song like that so she got nervous and was like okay well, i'm not gonna do it because face don't think i could do it really yeah so it went to shanice and shanice murdered that joint obviously it was Shanice's record so wow yeah okay Carl Thomas Summer Rain oh <laughs> so that's me heavy my man DJ Rogers right mm -hmm. we're working on DJ Rogers songs because DJ Rogers was a song he was signed to heavy at the time mm -hmm. uh, to Universal through heavy's label we've been working on records for him and heavy had, had this little beat right 
just a drum beat. I had a guitar. It was like a cheap little acoustic guitar. So I got an idea. I went in the booth and played do 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 do. It was like, oh, that's dope. So we put that and I played the bass line. This is dope. What we gonna say over it? I had just introduced Heavy to some songs and I played him "Summer Soft" by Stevie Wonder. Summer Soft. On the on the songs in the Key of Life album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, we can just say "Summer Rain," and then Heavy wrote the rest. This was me to sleep and wakes me up again. Sometimes I swear it was DJ Rogers' song. But when Puff heard it, it was like, yo, this would be dope for Carl. There you go. Wow. You end up being cool with Puff. Oh, yeah. Like <laughs> that same year, he called me, wished me Merry Christmas. Oh, wow. You know, called me the N word. <laughs> <laughs> then he said he was proud of me. There you go. Luther Vandross, Take You Out. Oh, Take You Out Tonight. Take You Out Tonight was written by. Uh, 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 myself, uh, John Jubu Smith mm-hmm. from the Soul Seekers, guitar player. Yeah, and um, lyricist uh, um, Harold L- Harold Lilly, mm-hmm. Harold Spencer Lilly Jr. <laughs> My man, me and Harold wrote a lot of records together, a lot of records. Uh, and so it was just one of those days. We I had to beat. We me and Jubu worked on the music. Harold comes to the house, and we me and him were both signed to Big John at the mm-hmm. time. He hits the record and goes like, "Yo." This is dope. Writes it. He wrote that thing in maybe like 30 minutes. Oh, wow. The, and then we you know, sung it and sent it in. Actually, no. I, I, I played it for Clive Davis in person. Really? Yeah. And then he goes, this is so funny. He goes, uh, this would be great for Luther. I'm like, who's Luther? <laughs> <laughs> who's that? I'm telling you, his he had his Larry Jackson's in the room, his staff, my man Ron Gilliard's in the room. They're looking at me like, huh? I was like, who's I don't know who Luther is? Luther Vandross. Like, oh shoot, Luther Vandross. <laughs> you just knew that's not who they could have been talking yeah, about. Yeah, I just <laughs> they, you mean them? You need another Luther. You can't be talking about Luther Vandross. Yeah, some young dude named Luther. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He was signed there, but that and, and ended up happening. Wow. Okay. Mary, Mary, God, it's the God in me. God in me came. Uh, 2008, I was diagnosed with cancer. And so renal cell, kidney cancer, crazy cancer, you know, diagnosed on a Friday, cancer free the next Friday. It's mm. crazy, right? Listen, I could, don't, don't, don't do it. I'll run around this, <laughs> I'll run around this podcast table. Uh, and so in the hospital, I, I keep hearing this, this drum beat thing. By the time I left the hospital, but now I'm home in the bed. My laptop's right there. Mm. And I, this is before I started making, now everybody makes beats on the laptops. Then I, I was not. Mm. But I couldn't make any music. I just had the laptop. So I started, yeah. had it on my chest, started making the beat. And then the chorus. I did all that. I didn't even have a keyboard. I was doing it on the, the laptop oh keyboard. Oh my God. Right? By the time I got well, we go to the studio. And I'm play, I play it on the speakers now. And I had never heard it. In, I just heard it on the laptop speakers. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like a little whatever. Well, by the time I got to the studio and played it on the big speakers, I was like, yo, this is crazy. Mm. So I jump in the booth and I free, I'm, like, I'm a casual writer when I write lyrics. Right. I, I'm, not, I'm more of a rapper slash writer. I'm not, yeah. you know, I'm not necessarily a singer singer. So. He's lying, by the way. No, I mean. No, nah, <laughs> Warren is the most, any person, of all the people I've ever met, who downplay their vocal ability. <laughs> Warren Campbell is a lying person to you right now. I've been at the church. I want a solo. Me and Melissa want a Warren Campbell solo album. Warren Campbell can sing. Stop. No, but, Stop lying, Warren. No, I can sing. Okay. But, I, but I'm but i more of a rapper singer. Okay, like, that you know, just like, you're a good I rapper, just, too. Yeah, I've never done that. But I've rapped on people's albums and mm. stuff like that, but. So I go in, he's so fly, you're so nice. Everybody mm-hmm. trying, to, trying to figure out. Well, I'm just re- freestyling. Yeah. It's the guy in me. Tina's like, yo, that's dope. She writes the second verse. You know, and then we, boom. Songs, Kiki was there. Because I was working on Kier Shear's album. <laughs> I had just did a song called Wave Your Banner and some other song. I was like, Kiki, come, come in here. Come here, sing mm-hmm. this part. What is... You know that's how Kiki got on the record. She just had I didn't ears. even know that was her singing. That's Kiki. That's what, at the at the. When what it, is it you think you see when you see me, Kiki? You oh see my God! Me. I didn't know that's what you meant. <laughs> Kiki. Oh yeah. my God! And, and I got auto tune on heavy. 
What? It's like a trap beat. This is before trap music. This is before auto tune yeah. is like cracking. We're doing all those things before they're popular. Yeah. I never. I was saying the ad lib and didn't know what I was saying. <laughs> Just keep, keep. Yeah. I don't know. I was calling her she's name. She's in the video. She's in the video. This, she, you could just be in the video. It ain't got nothing to do with nothing. <laughs> but she's singing that part I in the video. I don't care, Warren. I didn't know is what I'm telling you. Yeah, never put listen, two and two together. That was an experience because that video was so fun. I got mm. Kelly Price, Kanye's in the video. Uh, the girl he's a date with the bald head. Amber Rose. Amber Rose is in the video <laughs> with some little <laughs> booty shorts on. It's crazy. I know the church people are like, what in the heck is going on? Uh... <laughs> I said, comment uh, 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 Bentley Fonsworth and his wife Fonz in the video. It was, it was, it was a lot of fun. Wow. Okay. Uh, Brandy, he is. Brandy, he is again. Harold Lilly. Mm-hmm. We were in there writing songs, doing records for Brandy, and um, and I had the music going, I had the chords and all this kind of stuff. And so Harold was like, because we had been having these these deep discussions with Brandy about religion, and she was at the time she was like, you know, I know what God. God is the trees. He's the sky. He's the, he was on, I was like, did she had this book? <laughs> this thing called the Book of Yoni. Mm. And it, it basically it shows you all the trees, flowers, all the things in the world that are that were made by Mother Nature that look like vaginas. <laughs> I didn't I had heard Yoni, but I was like, maybe he's talking about something different. But he was talking about the same thing. Yeah, it was a whole book. It was a coochie tree so, book. So my shout out to <laughs> rest in peace, my man Big Shiz, Sean Daniels. He was there. And so he was like, I said, man, she came in here with this book. You know, he said, I seen that book a tail. <laughs> <laughs> book a <of> tail. <laughs> she was like, this is God. I was like, so Harold goes, she gonna sing about God. She just ain't gonna know it. <laughs> So we wrote "He Is," you know. Wow, she killed that song too. Deborah Cox almost, almost uh, intercepted that joint too. Woo! I had a session with Deborah or a meeting with Deborah. I was upstairs in the lounge and the joint was playing. Mm. The chords I just had it on the loop playing as we were, he was writing to it. Yeah, and he must have walked out. She walked in and I came downstairs from the lounge. She was like, almost in tears. She was like, "I love it. It's 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 amazing." She thought it was for her. I was like, "Ooh, <laughs> no, man, this is no." Stop! This is this is not for you. Sorry. Ah! Sorry. But we gave Deborah. We gave her some some dope records too. But. Man. Okay. Drake since way back. Okay. So that is one of them deals which I I love now mm-hmm. that I'm a little older in this business where people sample your records. Mm-hmm. That Drake sampled a record that I did. Man, I'm not, am I allowed to say a record I did on R. Kelly? Mm. I mean, it's, if it's the truth, it is the truth. You didn't know then. I didn't know he was peeing on people, <laughs> so I did not know he had a he had a <laughs> toilet deficiency. <laughs> he decided to pee on people. <sighs> anyway, he was locking up kids and babies in the basement. So we did this record, and Drake sampled that record. Ah, uh, I did. I just hear. We can cut this out if we need to. Uh, uh, you, people of the lighter hue were redid shackles. Have you heard that? Yes. <laughs> I was like, Warren's probably okay with this. Yes, our 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 blank brothers and sisters. <laughs> they have definitely <laughs> shackles. They just did a little more Jesus, but they won't play the records on their stations. Really? Just like Erica's song, "Little More Jesus," has like seven different remakes. Really? Yeah. Like clear artist, and like they would not. Why every time I say a uh, clear, or like, I look at him every time. Because obviously you're there, you're not clear. I can see you. Hey, <laughs> oh, I remember I heard it. I was gonna make fun of it, and then I was like, "Hey, by the way, tell me your name again, Cameron." Anytime you see black people do this, they're talking about you. <laughs> when they go like. <laughs> I'm starting to share our, our secrets. I'm starting to share our family secrets. <laughs> but you should know. Because don't you wish if you were talking if you're in an elevator and you hear people talking Spanish, if you knew what they were saying, now you got you got a little something. If you see somebody go, 
He's like, you go just do this again. I know. I'm here. <laughs> bless, bless him out, Kim. <laughs> All right, Kanye West, God is. Ooh, so Ye's doing Sunday service. Asked me to come um, and speak at the Sunday service. Mm. So I go up there before our service, and I do like five, ten minutes, and we I preach. Uh, two weeks later, I'm in Cincinnati at the commission reunion. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm walking, me and Big Shiz, we're walking around. Ye calls my phone, says, yo, I want to start bringing Sunday service to churches. Mm-hmm. Were you there when they came? Mm-mm. Oh, man. I was on the road. I was on the road for like three years straight. Hey, man, you missed. This was crazy at the yeah. church. So Kanye brings his whole, This is, our church was the first church he went to. Oh, really? Yeah. So I did not tell anybody. I didn't tell, I didn't announce it. I didn't go on Twitter or wherever, Instagram or do any yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. And people showed up to church just like, you know, and, they, and the choir didn't have on their Kanye gear, the, you know, the, yeah, the yeah, yeah. clothes that they wear. They just had plain clothes on that were sitting in the audience. I didn't know how they were going to do it. So, um, matter of fact, I wasn't preaching that Sunday. Rabbi Jason Sobel, he was preaching that mm-hmm. Sunday. And so I'm talking, you know, I said, hey, guys, um, I got a homeboy who we've been down for years. He just wanted to come share some things with you guys. Is that all right? I said, yeah, yeah. They said, is that all right? Yeah, yeah. Hey, yay, come on out here. They were like, what? And Kanye comes out the back. Oh, man. He sits on his keyboard and starts messing with samples. Damn. Then, 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 then. All of a sudden, he hits this one. Boom! All of a sudden, the choirs in the audience spread out all over, and they just start singing from the audience. Oh, the blessing! Oh, wow! That night, he said, "I need you to come to the house." I was like, "All right, I'm working on this album called Jesus is King." So, all right, I played him some samples I had. God is the old James Cleveland song. Mm-hmm. I love that. And then, you know, there it is. There it is. I know I have I have very long answers. You should I should have forewarned you. Man, I already knew. <laughs> we had a pre-production meeting on it, and you just won another Grammy for for the song "Jail" with Kanye West. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was crazy. How many Grammys do you have? I think it's weird. I like that would be my sixth, fifth statue. Mm-hmm. But some people count those Grammy plaques that you get too, not the mm-hmm. ones for being nominated, but like when, when you're the, part of a song that wins or yeah. a project that wins. They give you this thing, so I I've been told you can't count the plaques. But then when I go on Wikipedia, it says I got fourteen Grammys. Mm, you then you got fourteen. I was like, I would count it all. Yeah, count it all, joy. Ah, even win. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about California Worship Center. Started in 2015. I was there at the inaugural service at the hotel. Started in 2015, April 5th. Mm-hmm. Yesterday was our seventh anniversary. Yeah, look at that. I got our keys. Hey, to the building on the seventh what's anniversary. What's seven in the Bible? New begin? No. Completion? No. It's completion! Yeah. New, be- new beginnings, eight? I've never completion. been good with numbers. Eight, eight, eight is eight, new beginning. Eight, eight. Oh, because that's the Monday of the Bible. The ad. Because <laughs> Sunday to Sunday, that was the completion. <laughs> Monday through. How? how we the Monday, that next Monday would be eight. That would be eight. It means over. God, the last was, week is over. The, wor- the world was already made it. God yeah. already made it. I'm with that logic. I'll go with that. <laughs> I would, I would follow that. I'd follow that. And the address on the building is 214. What's that mean? Add the numbers up. <laughs> oh! 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 <laughs> I don't know nothing about numbers. Okay? I don't like math. <laughs> I was like, uh. Oh. Uh, what does it mean? Tell me. Tell me. I'm going to pour. I'm going to get the butter oil. <laughs> Give me the ketchup put... oil. <laughs> <laughs> I want to catch him in, in, in mustard anointed. So how did you come to be a pastor of, of, a, of a church? Because that is the, to me, that is the most taxing call that you can yeah. get from the Lord. To me. And it's the most furthest away <laughs> from the ideas that I have for my own life. Right. I'm a producer and I'm, fairly successful and I'm doing my thing and I live a life where I don't have to be anywhere mm-hmm. ever like literally like I'm I, I'm 46 years old I've never had a job before in my life <laughs> I've never have you you worked places absolutely have you worked places I've never worked anywhere <laughs> you ain't never got a W2 no I don't even know what that is <laughs> right 
<laughs> I, I don't know what it is to get a paycheck at all. Wow. Other than when I worked at Electra Records, but that's still music. Yeah. And I didn't have to go there. <laughs> so nobody required me to come anywhere. <laughs> so this is different. I have to be somewhere every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Even on staff at, at my church before I was pastoring, I didn't show up that much. I was like at church. Shout out to my bishop, Bishop Kenneth Omer in the Faithful Central Church, FCBC, my, my, my family. I wasn't there but twice a month. Like, and I'd be like, you know, in bed, getting ready to get up. I'm like, nah. <laughs> I'm staying home today. <laughs> now, <laughs> I got to be somewhere on Sundays. Oh, my God. But, so what, what really happened was, in the same vein of a songwriter and God downpouring or downloading songs, um, I started, you know, things started happening to me like I'll be driving and see a billboard of a, say it just says, whatever it says, mm -hmm. I'd see that and I'd get a whole download for a message or a sermon and i connect that to a scripture I just read or something mm -hmm. like that and it was just like, that's weird. That would happen all the time. We would have a conversation with anybody, any conversation, mm -hmm. anything I saw on TV, something I read, uh, you know, saw a movie I saw, it would just, come up as these whole full yeah. messages that I could preach. Problem is I've never preached like, you know, I, mean, I take that back, I take it back. I my first time I preached when I was 12. Well, you was a busy little preteen. Yeah, preteen. <laughs> Preaching. I didn't did I didn't did stuff in, <laughs> before I age of 12. God Man. Dog. But it was one of the things I was playing Nintendo. Uh and I heard my mama say, "Oh, really?" Oh, we'll get a little Warren to do it. I'm like, anytime I hear that, I'm like, <laughs> normally it means I got to go play at some church I don't want to play at. Yeah, yeah. You know, my mom's dragging me to some 3.30 service. I got a broke organ. I got to play. <laughs> <sighs> so I'm like, man, what is my mom getting me into now? And she hangs the phone up and walks back in the room. So next Sunday, you you preaching at the youth service. I was like, what? <laughs> I don't, what are you talking about? I don't know how to do that. Are you, what are you saying? Oh my gosh! And now I gotta preach. Uh, like uh, I mimic preachers. I don't like right, I play right, preach. Right, but I don't know right. how to preach. And you would think my dad's a pastor. He's my pastor. Yeah. You would think he would help me. No. <laughs> Nobody helped me do anything. <laughs> I don't know if you were there at the time my son got up and, and spoke for five minutes mm. at church. You weren't at the. You were, he's not at the church at all. I did that to you. I was like, God. <laughs> <laughs> I just got. I just, ah, I just I, later. <laughs> Next time, I'm gonna catch it online. I'm gonna catch the replay. <laughs> so, but when my son at nine years old, he he spoke. He did five minutes. I said I prepared him. Mm. I wrote notes, helped him. He did a great job. Yeah. Nobody helped me. <laughs> and I was terrible. When I say terrible, I did what I saw. So I got up and I played the organ. I sung a song. Right. And like this, how far I got? Turn with me in the book of uh, to the book of Romans, the eighth chapter, uh, and we'll read for your hearing the third verse. <laughs> At twelve. Uh, and uh, <laughs> it's good to see Pastor So and So here today. Good to, God bless you uh, from the Olivet uh, Apostolic Church. I see my mother in the house. My mother's here. Uh, thank God for you and your ministry, Mom. Thank you. Uh, and. Uh, and I read the scripture, and it came to pass, da, 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 right? After that, it was all that I was talking about anything. <laughs> I had no notes after that. It was just like, man, my sister took my toys. I told her I, I was the one in the, I was the one, like, I don't even like yogurt like that. <laughs> it was like, it, it was all downhill. In Jesus' name, like amen. Like <laughs> so the Ninja Turtles, you understand me? Turtles in a half shell. Turtle power. God has power. Amen. He's the shield of truth. Turtles have shields. Oh, you understand me? <laughs> it was that. So I was like, I'm never doing this again. Mom, you can't make me. I don't care what you, you can whoop me for five years. I don't care. I'm not doing it again. So I had a phobia. That I, I wasn't a good public speaker. I don't, I'm quiet. Like normally right. I don't talk. So Fast forward, I'm 16. My dad says, listen, um, the Holy Spirit told me 
I'm not supposed to go to church today. You run the service. I was like, Dad, you got to be kidding me. So I didn't preach. Right. What I did was I stood up there and prayed. Mm. Closed my eyes, and I prayed for like 10 minutes. When I opened my eyes, the whole church was laid out. Oh, wow. Everybody's on the floor. Crying. I was like, you know, it's one of those things. I was like, man. So that was the last time that happened. So fast forward now, I'm at Faithful Central Bible Church, and these things are happening to me. Mm. And I'm I'm like hearing these words. I said, Dang, am I supposed to preach? So I go to my bishop and tell him, I think I'm being called. Mm. He says, okay, well, we have a two-year program for ministers here. We're going to enroll you in that with Dr. Steve, uh, Dr. Steve Johnson. And, you know, you do that. About three months into it, I'm taking that. I'm taking a hermeneutics class and a homiletics class Ooh. at the church. Hermeneutics and homiletics. Yeah, on the weekends. And then the uh, uh, public speaking class on Tuesdays or Mondays or Tuesdays, whatever it was. And we're crafting sermons. We're learning how to do all that stuff. You know. uh, I'm out one night with the bishop's son. I met shout out to Kendon K. Fam. And I'm taking him home. I got to use the restroom, go in the house. I'm leaving. Bishop comes running downstairs. This is December. Uh, December 09. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. I need you to get yourself together. Uh, January such and such, we're ordaining you. Huh? I mean, we're licensing you. Mm. I said, i only been in the program three months. This is two years. Because I'm like, I got two years. I'm good. Right, right. He said, no, 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 no. Dr. Steve tells me you are doing well. You're ready. And we got all females. I need a male. He says, you're ready. I'm like, oh, jeez. <laughs> what in the world is happening? <laughs> so that... Sunday, it happened to be the Sunday of the Grammys. We win a Grammy for Go Get It, I think. Got him or go, no, maybe got him. I want to know. We leave, that's, that's at the pre show. We leave there. I go to church and get licensed. Become a licensed minister that's at Faithful Central. Day. That's a very busy day. Five years later, I'm I'm feeling this call to start, start a, you know, a Bible study. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I started. My bishop is christening my two youngest kids at our house and there's just a picture of this conversation is me him and my dad he said how how's bible studies going i said it's going pretty good how many people showing up it's like the well, first one was like 70 people and the next one was like 80 so you know between 70 80 sometimes it could be nice he says well you really we got to start talking about the next steps i was like bishop uh ain't no next steps he said you know the average church size in america is 70 people Really? Yeah, I didn't know that. I was like, okay, like, what the God, what that got to do with me? Right, right. But uh, he's not saying anything that I've not been hearing. Yeah, yeah, in my yeah. spirit, I just don't want to do that. Right. Like, I could rather bake some cookies or something. I, I could do anything else, right? <laughs> so, uh, he just this confirmation, man. And he started doing stuff like, like one day he's preaching. I'm sitting on the second row of the church, me and my wife. He's taking or doing an altar call after he preaches. And it's taking a while for people to come up, so he just keeps going. Nobody's coming. He just keeps, you know, keeps the appeal going. And is there, is there one? God wants you. He wants to heal you. He wants to do the Next thing I know, there's like 60 or 70 people at the altar. Mm. He stops praying for people, stops and walks over, puts the mic down, walks over to where I'm sitting, gets in my face. Do you see that, Warren? This is what it's all about. You don't stop. I don't care what you preach about. I don't care what they sing about. This is the moment this is for. And I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> like, what? Okay. Well, why you do? Why? You know. Or one day he's preaching. He, you sometimes, you just got to do what God said because it's what he said. Warren, it's what he said, Warren. You got to do what he said, Warren. <laughs> like, I'm going to start saying in the back. <laughs> ah! Ah! Yeah, it's one of those moments. Wow. And he ordains me and we start the church, man. We started, you like you said, you were there. Mm. I don't know if you was at the first service or second. I was second. at the very sur- first. So we get there at 10 because it starts at 11. There's a line wrapped oh. around the building and it's, and it's packed inside yep. the little, like a little movie theater looking, mm-hmm. little theater thing. It was at 150 people packed in there. What up, y'all? want to take a quick break from the show to talk to you about one of our sponsors, Raycon. Listen, lately I've been listening to Kenyon Dixon's new album, the album's titled Closer. Let me tell you what, okay? He bringing R&B back and never left because he was always on it. Listen, go go check it out. 
all right, on Apple Music or wherever you're listening to it. But it sounds amazing. You know why? Because I've been listening to my Raycon wireless earbuds, okay? These Raycon wireless earbuds have an everyday look, feel, and sound better than ever. Now, Kenyon make good music. Raycon make it sound as good as he desired it to be. With optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit, these earbuds are so comfortable and they will not budge. Trust me, Raycons offer three sound profiles to match what you're listening to, plus noise isolation, noise, plus noise isolation, awareness mode, so you can choose to be immersed in sound or be able to hear your surroundings when you need to. Listen, I listen to music mainly when I'm working out, okay? And I be huffing and I be puffing and I be jumping and, and running and I need for my earbuds to stay put, okay? And I listen to R&B when I work out, okay? I used to listen to rap and uplifting, like, rah, rah, rah music, but I found that that R&B lets me be calm so I can be one with the weight as opposed to fighting and being aggressive. So, yes, I listen to Kenny's uh, Got Souls album when I'm at the gym, okay? And Raycons give me eight hours of playtime, 32 hours of battery life. Then, when you do need to charge, it's super easy. You can even do it wirelessly. And it's a huge selling point. Raycons, you get the same quality audio as premium audio brands, but at half the price. Yes, really. But that doesn't mean they won't last. I've seen people talking about their Raycons falling three stories, getting lost in the rain, snowstorms, a dog looking at it and peeing on a little bit, and it still works afterwards. It's no wonder Raycons everyday earbuds have over 49,000 five-star reviews. Listen to this. Check out a Raycon wireless earbuds. My guess is that you're going to want to leave a five-star review too. Go to buyraycon.com slash stage today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash stage. Score 15% off. Buyraycon.com slash stage. And now back to the show. So we ended up having to have a second service. Yep. Uh, and I find out, I don't know if I told you this story, 50 cents was staying in that hotel. No. I don't know 50. He was in the front of the hotel waiting on a ride or something. Somebody's picking him up. And as people were coming in, he was kind of directing traffic. Like, you got y'all looking for the church? Oh, just make a left, make a right, and go that way. <laughs> right? Oh my God. People start tweeting, because we had Jonathan McReynolds that day. I was there, Your too. arch nemesis. My arch nemesis. <laughs> Johnny <laughs> Mack was there at the first service. First service. <laughs> Johnny Mack. So he's there. So people started tweeting, 50 Cent and John Jonathan McReynolds are at one in Erica Campbell's church, California <laughs> Worship Center. It, this is Easter. Man. So like, oh, I'm going out there. <laughs> I don't see that though. Right. Till I get home that night, I'm like, yo, what in the world? I had no idea. That's crazy. And so we, we did a coffin membership that day. About 70 people joined the church. And then that was our last time at that place. We had to go mm -hmm. to a rec center for like a couple months. Then yep. we ended up at the school. I was there every time. Oh, yeah, yeah I was. And now I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Before I let you go, we got the Kev's top 10. We ask every guest to answer these questions. All we ask is that you remain completely honest oh, in your answers. On. Number one, who's your favorite person? Jesus. Just need a little bit more Jesus. Number two, uh! what's one of your happiest moments? One of my happiest moments? Oh, man, recently my daughter got accepted to Spelman. Really? Yeah, she's going. She's leaving us in August to go to. She's a senior? She's a senior, yeah. Krista. Krista's a senior. She's going down to Atlantis at the AUC? Yeah, I'm right down to Atlantis. Wow. <laughs> My sister in law is going to love that. She's a Spelman woman. Oh, wow. What's one of your saddest moments? Saddest moments ever. My grandfather passed mm. 95, about. Four months before he could ever meet my wife. Oh. You know what I'm saying? I wanted him to know her. Yeah. In your grits, mm. salt and pepper or sugar? Both. Let me tell At you At the what, same time? Let me tell you what I do. And don't nobody do it like this. Now, I, if you're watching this, take my recipe down. Uh, I got half of this recipe from, from Charles Jenkins. He's the best grit maker on the planet. <laughs> so you, you can do regular grits or even the instant grits, but you put them in the pot. Mm -hmm. right boil it up do what you do i put salt and pepper and a little half and half and and uh a, a heavy whipping cream okay now you make a dessert <laughs> when i tell you it's amazing salt and pepper and very lightly a little bit of sugar so it's savory but it's a hair bit sweet it's amazing i actually want to try that i ain't gonna hold you I got you on the on the half and half on the heavy cream. I said, now what you what you said now, Warren? <laughs> That's God downloaded another message yeah. to you when He gave you that. He said, get the heavy cream going at hermeneutics, homiletics, <laughs> <laughs> sweet potato pie or pumpkin pie. Man, I ain't never had no pumpkin pie like oh, Bernie Mac. 
<laughs> Anita Baker or Patty LaBelle? Oh, man. I'm going to have to go with Neat Neat. <laughs> neat Neat. Favorite black saying? <laughs> Don't give me the line. <laughs> We ain't had that one yet. Now don't get me the line. Now don't don't go up. That just means I don't know. Right. Don't get me the line. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What excites you? Is <sighs> kids watching this? There ain't no kids watching. Mm. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. They Listen, you. I got my own stripper at home. She don't know it. Does she don't know that she's stripping? <laughs> She certainly don't know she's stripping for me, but anytime my wife comes home and starts to take her clothes off in front of the day, I'm like, hey. And she always has to stop like, why are you looking at me like that? I'm like, sorry. <laughs> All right, what bores you? Oh, well, it's a myriad of things, but and I know I'm a preacher and I'm a long-winded, but anybody that's just rambling. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Get me out of here. Woo! Talk, <laughs> long talkers? <laughs> Get me out of here. Mm -mm. All right, last one. What do you want your legacy to be? You know what? Really, I want to be known as a good guy, you know, but mm. I want to speak from the grave, right? Uh, and be immortalized some kind of way. I think music is allowing me to get some of that back, but then I think the way I'm setting up mm, the inheritance financially mm -hmm. for my children's children's children. The way I did it is my kids are not going to get my money when when I when I pass away. They'll get some money because I'm putting enough into them, but they're gonna have their own. They're not they're not gonna need anything from mm. me. But their kids, they're gonna get some money, uh, and then their kids. Uh, providing they have a very viable and solid business plan, they can draw three to five million dollars, right? And they have ten years to get that back. If they don't get it back in in ten years or pay it back, they can never draw from it again. But their kids can. And so I'll be talking to them financially from the grave for the rest of my lineage. I have never heard such a boss move in my life. You, I want to give you a chance to fail. And yeah. if you fail, the, the babies get a chance. Because in 10 years, the interest would have compiled your, the, what yeah. you took out anyway. Yeah. So it just keeps, you know. Dang. So that's, that's the legacy. They, 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 the Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance, not for his children, but for his children's children. I got my kids and the dog gonna be okay. I ain't got to <laughs> my kids get Monty. He said, "Man, I got I got food for me for years." If they if Kev go on, and, they, and he Why got the farmer's dog. Monty? His, his full name Lamontarius. <laughs> he's a black dog, and I want him to know he's black. He Have know you his fed your dog people food. What Melissa makes his dog food now. We ain't talked about it. His old food was making his stomach messed up. Listen, I got you. But he has homemade dog food so now. Your, does your dog has high blood pressure? <laughs> First of all, in her sugar. last batch, I was like, hold up. Well, you put the gravy in it? <laughs> you had rice? These are all things I like. You got rice, turkey, a little bit of gravy. Why? What makes it dog food? Is it If you haven't given it to him, these are just our groceries. This Is it dog food yet? Or is it just did you put did you go to the dog food aisle and get some of this? That's, or this the side, this the people food this aisle? This is people food for the dog. I just wanted could you put that gravy in it? This is basically shepherd's pie. You just have rice instead of potatoes. I love shepherd's pie. Your dog, Why can't I taste it? Your dog is soon to have a receding hairline. <laughs> when does it become dog food? Is what I want to know, because I want you put that gravy your on it. Your dog is gonna lose all his teeth. <laughs> Pill for me, pill for you, Monty. You know we can't be outside walking. Them joints is, you know, that pressure. His hind leg don't work like it used to. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ooh. Warren Campbell II, a.k.a. Oh, Baby Dub, tell us what you're excited about and where you, they can follow you. Oh, man. I'm excited about everything. <laughs> Which camera is mine? That one? This, this is you right here. Everything. <laughs> no, so you can follow me. Warren Campbell. Now you have to spell my name correctly, mm -hmm. okay? Because people tend to spell it with an E. It's not W R 
W A R W A R R E N W A R R Y N. That's a real name. The other way is a hole in the ground. Mm. Warren with the Y is German for defender. Oh, that's that hermeneutic homiletics. Yes. Mm-hmm. So Warren Campbell, Campbell like the soup, one word, and any social. Not Twitter. They, I can't get. It. <laughs> Just stay out of there, man. Yeah, if I can't know. get in it. No, I can't. I, I'm, oh, I, you locked out. I forgot my password, so I, now it's just Warren Stafford. My middle name is Stafford. Well, that's a regal name. Warren Stafford Campbell II. <laughs> he sound like he wear an ascot. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Warren Campbell. Warren Stafford Campbell II. Make sure to follow him and check out all the things he's working on. If you're watching this with ads, that means you're not watching it on the Kevin Stage Studios app. Shame. Where it is ad-free. Okay? Shame on you. If not, you can catch wherever podcasts are found, plus on YouTube and Facebook. God bless you. God keep you. We'll see you at the conference.